Welcome to Life Devotions. Thank you for joining me today. There is forgiveness with God, as the title of this devotion. You know, that's a statement here in Psalm 130. That statement has always been something I've grown up with, and I'm so grateful that my father raised me with this heart and this mind and my mother. How often did my father have to look at me since I was kind of born with quite a temper? And he'd have to look at me when he saw how upset I was and say, son, let it go, let it go, and it will let you go. You see, the Dutch Bible says, let go, and it will let you go, where the English Bible would say, forgive, and you will be forgiven. But that is what it means to forgive, is to let go of it, to not hold it, to not, to not be busy with it, to release it. And you may say, yeah, but hold on a moment, Pastor. How can I release what they said, what they did? How can I release that? How can I? Well, I understand. I've gone through that myself, where it's sometimes so stuck into me and I try to release it, try to release it, but it just wouldn't come out. And I've had to keep coming to the Lord and coming to the Lord by resisting the enemy's temptation who would come into that hurt and try to use it as a way to poison me with bitterness and with resentment and so forth. And I've had to just keep releasing it and releasing it. And to be honest with you, what God worked through all of that pain for me was worth the pain because I learned graces, I learned ways of thinking, I learned ways of believing I did not know before that God worked in me through me constantly releasing it to him, releasing it to him, releasing it to him, releasing it to him. And then when I finally got through, and some of it lasted a long time, many years, he brought into me yeah, the kind of nature I'm able to share with you today, which I, I have to say that it's not of myself. It's come from the Lord. So let me read to you to hear these words. I think it's a Psalm of uh, David, but uh, Psalm 130. Out of the depths I have cried to you, O Lord. And if there's anything I would encourage you to do when you're really in pain and you just don't know what to do with the pain, don't run away from it. Don't, don't go hide yourself. No, cry out to God. I'm not saying don't go into your prayer closet. No, the opposite. Go into your prayer closet. Go into a place where you are alone with God, but cry out to Him about it. Cry out to God. He says, out of the depth I've cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications, my deep crying. If you, Lord, would mark iniquity, O Lord, who could stand? If you would hold against us our sins, then who could survive? But there is forgiveness with you that you might be feared, the title of this devotion. There's forgiveness with God. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in His word I do hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. Yes, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy, and with Him is an abundant redemption. He will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. Wow, what a phenomenal statement. You read that same statement in Micah 7, verse 8. He will redeem, deliver Israel from all of its crooked, sinful ways. What a phenomenal statement to make. That's like us to, to say, He will deliver all of Britain, all of what your nation is from all of its iniquities. Now, come on. Wouldn't that be a prayer worth praying and say, Lord, come to us as a nation and deliver us from our sinful ways. Show us the abundance of your mercy. Father, if you would regard any of us after our sins, we're all consumed. Because you know, it says here in Romans chapter 3, verse 10. Romans 3, verse 10. There, as it is written, there's none righteous, no, not one. 
There's none who understands. There's none who seeks after God. They have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There's none who does good. No, not one. Their throat is an open tomb. Their tongue they have, uh, with their tongue they have practiced deceit. The poison of aspen is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. And then he says in verse 23, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But, hallelujah, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that's in Christ Jesus. All of us have sinned, but all of us can be saved from sin. Oh, what a wonderful thing it is to come into the realization there is forgiveness available to you and me with God. There is forgiveness with God. I am so grateful for the love. Even though we have all sinned and fall short of His glory and there's none righteous yet, we know what it says right here in 1 Timothy chapter 1. This is a faithful saying, verse 15, and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. However, for this reason I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show all longsuffering as a pattern for those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life. Wow. Wow. He says it's true. It's true, we've all sinned, but Jesus has come into the world to save sinners. So any of you know that Jesus has come for you and he's come to release you from the burden of sin and bring into you that wonderful spirit and grace. I am forgiven, I am forgiven. Oh, we used to sing all these songs at the cross at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my sin was rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight and now I am no longer the same. Oh, all these beautiful songs we used to sing when I was a young boy and how the Holy Spirit used those songs to grab my heart and plant it inside of me like I started this devotion. There is forgiveness with God. And when I've gone through times in my life that the Lord arrested me when I would not admit to Him what a sinner I was, and in His mercy He arrested me, and conviction pierced the hardness of my heart and broke through the shell of self-indulgence and the pleasures of sin, and I was pierced. How out of that brokenness I cried, knowing there is forgiveness with God. Oh, how I long that when the Lord pierces the hardness of the heart, there is a voice in there that says, Father, Father, be merciful to me, a sinner. You know, Jesus here in Luke chapter 18, which is again one of those amazing chapters, in Luke chapter 18, Jesus, starting at verse 9, spoke a parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. I know that when you are angry or offended or feel hurt or betrayed, you can often be snared by the devil to only see the fault of others and not see your lack of mercy and grace in your own heart that I talked about yesterday. So I want to encourage you, if you're hurting, I'm not minimizing the pain you're suffering or the pain that was done to you, but don't let yourself be snared by the devil that all you could see is what they, what he would see. But come to Jesus, cry out from the depth of your heart, Psalm 130, 
and let his mercy and grace and forgiveness come to your heart, not just for you, but through you, fathers. And Jesus here gives this parable. He says, two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. It's the extremes uh, of the pendulum. The Pharisees was considered the ones who had everything right. The tax collectors were the worst of society considered. So Jesus uses two extremes to make his point. He says, the Pharisee stood and prayed thus by himself, with himself, God, thank you that I'm not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as that tax collector. In other words, <laughs> how can you, you vow evil, unjust person, you extortioner, you tax collector, you adulterer, you know, you can get hurt and offended. When you are the recipient of such wrongdoing, but be careful, be careful to not be snared in that. Take it to the Lord is what I'm trying to show you. Come on, take it to the Lord. Because look at this. He says, um, or even as this tax collector, adulterers, or even as this tax collector, I fast twice a week, I give tithes. I've never done such thing. I would never do such thing. You know how we could sometimes be so offended. And Jesus said, but look at that tax collector. He's standing afar off. He would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but he beat his breast saying, God, God be merciful to me, a sinner. And I tell you, Jesus said, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled and he who humbles himself will be exalted. You see, every one of us goes through the test in his life, how you react to things. When you are the one that is the recipient of hurt done by another or pain done by another, the real test is not what they've done, but what you do with that pain, what you do with that hurt, with that what ha has happened that so caused you so much pain. What do you do with it? Do you come to it as a sweet offering to the Lord that you offer that pain to Him and He mixes it with His love and you begin to experience healing, not just for yourself, but even for the one who wounded you? That is Jesus. He mixed His pain with the Heavenly Father's love and out of His wounds flowed healing for the ones who wounded Him. Come on, take this word to heart. I really believe the Holy Spirit speaking to you. David says, and I'll close with that statement here from Psalm 32. <laughs> David says, oh, I love this Psalm. And, and, and Paul uses it in the book of Romans. Blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied is he who has forgiveness of his transgressions continually exercised upon him and whose sin is covered, blessed, happy, fortunate, and to be envied is the man to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity and in whom spirit there's no deceit. He has nothing to hide, nothing to hide. Come, let this love flow through you and in you. Amen. Have a good day.